Hello everyone, this is Glenn Elliott, and in today's tutorial we're going to be going over basic multicam editing in Final Cut Pro 10. Final Cut Pro 10 has an excellent implementation of multicam, and they even added a tool that allows you to natively sync your footage based on waveform. Now in Final Cut Pro 7 and earlier, you actually had to use third-party software to do so. So I think it's pretty cool that they actually have the native ability to do this. So we're going to start by creating a multi-camera clip, and obviously we have to combine these three clips to do so. This is uh, just a basic talking head intro to a recent corporate project we completed, and there's th three clips here. There's the boom audio mic, there's camera one, and camera two. So we need to combine these just to start the multi-camera clip. We're going to just click and drag a lasso over them, right-click and choose, new multi-camera clip. You can also go to file new multi-camera clip. I tend to use my mouse more so we're just going to go ahead and right click and choose new multi-camera clip. So as soon as you do that you're going to be greeted by a dialog box. The default name is fine for now. Uh, you'll see a checkbox under use audio for synchronization and that's what I was just describing how it's going to utilize the audio waveform to determine how to sync the footage which is how we always do it only because we shoot with DSLRs so we're not dealing with time code or jam sync or anything like that. Now you can go into use custom settings and make some changes if need be. I usually don't do so but I'm going to go over it briefly. The first two angle assembly and angle clip ordering. These relate to if each of your angles have multiple files. So if your cameras have started and stopped multiple times. So angle assembly, what that's going to do is basically keep each angle clean. It's going to keep all of camera one sh shots in camera one angle and call of camera two in camera two angle. It won't mix them up. So right now we've added metadata to each of our cameras, the camera one, camera two. Final Cut Pro has no way of knowing that this is camera one and this is camera two. We went into the inspector and added this information. So because we did that, we can actually use camera name and once I click that it's using the camera name to keep them all sorted. Now in this instance it doesn't, it's not really applicable because I don't have multiple starts and stops or just using a real basic short uh, project as an example. Now angle clip ordering is how the order of those shots on the angle are ordered so you don't want say the third shot on camera two to be first before the first shot so it just it controls the order in which the shots play out. You want them to be obviously in the correct contiguous order so there's a few options there either by time code or content code created. I usually use automatic. The angle synchronization, that's how it's the method in which it's going to synchronize the footage. Again, I like to use audio synchronization, but there are other options. If you click this, the drop down box, you have content created. Some people like to do you know, control all of their cameras and set them all to the same exact internal clock. Now, if that's done 100% precisely, you can probably use content created to uh, synchronize your footage. The next option is start of first clip. I don't really see a good use for this. Um, basically, what this means is it's going to use the very first frame of every shot of every angle and use that as a sync point. Now, most people don't hit record exactly at the same exact moment, so that's usually not uh, an option. Uh, the last one is first marker of the angle. Uh, on the angle. That is actually how Final Cut Pro 7 um, needed you to sync. Basically, if there was a clapper plate or a camera flash, you would actually go into each angle, each clip, and actually create a marker on that in the same exact camera flash or the same exact point in which the clapper plate came down. So it would use that marker to uh, synchronize the clips. So again, I like to use the basic use audio for, uh, audio for synchronization. It works pretty well. So we're just going to use uh, go back and go ahead and use uh, automatic settings. So we're going to click OK. It's going to create the multi-camera clip. As you can see, it's very quick. And here is our new multi-camera clip. You can tell it's a multi-cam clip because in the upper left, you see a little like area that looks like a bunch of like four squares together, which actually looks similar to the angle viewer, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So now we're going to highlight this and edit it down to the timeline. It looks like we're looking at a blank piece of media. Our viewer is black. There's no thumbnails drawing down here. And that's only because we're actually on the boom mic angle and that's actually audio and not a video angle. So by default, you're not going to see your angles in your viewer. You actually have to enable your angle viewer. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can hit this triangle and all the way on the upper right and choose show video angles. You can either click this or hit command option seven on your keyboard. So once that's open, you can actually see all three of your angles. We have our boom mic angle here, camera one and camera two. Now there's a lot of changes you can do and tweaks you can do to your multi-camera clip. And, and to do so, you have to actually get into the angle viewer. And there's two ways to do that. You can either right click on the multi-camera clip in the project and choose open an angle editor or simply just double click it in the event browser. I'm gonna right click and choose open an angle editor. 
Now, once we're in the angle editor, there is a ton of things you can do in here. For example, for one, I don't want my boom mic to be in the upper left, so I wanna reorder that. So I can't click and drag it, it doesn't do anything. I have to actually go in here all the way to the far right, and there's a little hash mark area. From here, you can turn, your cursor becomes a hand, you can click and drag that down. Now, when I drag that to the bottom, you've noticed that uh, boom mic audio angle went down to the bottom, it reordered. And then we're, we're gonna do the same thing for these two clips, we're gonna swap them here. So so these little hash marked areas here are just to kind of toggle your um, your angles around. And this isn't changing the sync, um, this is only changing the way it's viewing in the angle viewer. So all the way to the left here, you have two icons, and this is you can toggle the view of what angle you wanna look at uh, with this little television icon, or you can hit the, um, the little mic icon to uh, change what angle you're listening to. So you can use this and toggle them on and off and, and listen to it just to double check your sync in here. Now, if you made a multi-camera clip and you forgot an angle, so say this was a three camera shoot, we totally forgot to add that. We don't have to recreate it from scratch. See these little triangles to the right of the camera name? You can click that and choose add angle. So we can add an empty angle we can drag a new piece of media in there. We'll say this is our third camera angle, drag it in there, let go. Now, obviously this is not synced. We just dropped this in here, but we can sync it by clicking this triangle again and choosing sync selection to monitoring angle. So we can choose say this angle to be the monitoring angle and choose sync selection to monitoring angle. It's gonna analyze it and slide it into sync. So you just added an additional angle. Uh, also, if there is an angle that needs some color correction, you can actually do a global color correction to that angle as well. So the angle editor is extremely powerful and it's probably one of the reasons why I feel like Final Cut Pro 10's implementation of multicam is so much better than any other NLEs that I've seen. So we're just gonna remove that redundant angle that we just added here by hitting the triangle, hit delete angle. And we're just gonna go ahead and back out of here. So now we're back on the timeline. So now we're gonna begin editing our multi-camera clip. We're gonna move our cursor up here into the angle viewer area. And you notice, if you look closely, when you hover over one of the angles, your cursor becomes a blade icon. What that denotes is that it's going to, when you click on it, it's going to cut to that particular angle. So there's two different types of edits you can do from here. There's a cut or a camera switch. So if you just simply, by default, click it, it's gonna to cut to that particular angle. If you want to switch to a particular angle without making a bleed through your footage, hold down the option key. Now I'm, I'm toggling it now and you notice the icon is not changing. Bear in mind, it's a little, I don't know if it's a glitch, but it doesn't show up until you move your, your cursor. So just bear in mind, you hold the option key, it will work, you just have to move your cursor and that little finger icon will pop up. So I'm holding down the option key and that is a camera switch. So right now it's on the boom mic. We don't want to start with the boom mic, we want to start with the first angle here. So we want to hold down the option key and switch it to the camera two. In the upper left you're going to see three icons. The first one denotes video and audio, the next one is video only, and the final one is audio only. What these things do is define what is going to be cut or switched. By default, it's yellow, which is video and audio, so when we hit play, and backgrounds, how do you stand out? Cool. It's cutting to the other angle and also cutting to that audio from that angle as well, so it's cutting both. Um, so with this project, we never intended to use on-camera audio. We only recorded it for scratch audio for purposes of syncing it to the boom mic audio that we recorded separately. So um, for this reason, we want our boom mic to be our primary audio. So what we're gonna do is choose audio and we wanna switch to the boom mic audio by holding down the option key. So by clicking that, it switched this, the audio track for this entire multi-clip to pull from just the boom mic. Now we wanna go back to cutting our video, so we click video only. So now we're not going to affect the audio whatsoever. We can go ahead and cut between the angles and it's not gonna affect the source of our audio. So we're gonna hit play. By talking about that, what are organizations really looking for? change the other camera. In a nutshell, whether it's the first time they're looking at your resume or during the final again. stages of a live interview, they are looking for the and answer just to live. one simple question. Why hire you? It's now, if you go back here at the bottom and we notice, say, you know, this angle, we actually still want it to be on the other angle. We can actually switch that angle by hovering and holding down the option key and switching that angle. Finally, you can actually switch your cameras without even using the mouse. Now, this is how I edit all the time. This is how I use multi-clips. 
I love this. I know it seems like such a simple implementation, but the fact that the number keys will switch your angles, I think is brilliant. It makes it very easy. So I have my fingers hovering over one, two, and three, depending on how many angles I have. And as I play, why hire hit you? one to go to the first angle. It sounds angle. so simple. But when they have so Two. many candidates with similar if skills I have other angles, I can hit that as well. So it just out? makes it really simple. So now, obviously, when you tap that number, it's going to cut like, you know, your default cut where you hover. But if you want to, say, switch to a particular angle, you can actually hold down the option key and the number, just like you would up here when you hold the option key to actually switch you can hold down the option key while you tap your number it'll do Bar. a camera switch something on the option one so it'll switch it back so so that's multi-cam editing in a nutshell that's the basics final cut pro 10 did an excellent job of the implementation of it and in the next tutorial we're going to dive deeper into more complex edits thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys next time